Second Book First Part 1 First Lecture Called Begging of Food 2 First Lesson When a male or a female mendicant, having entered the abode of a householder with the intention of collecting alms, recognizes three food, drink, dainties, and spices as affected by, or mixed up with, living beings, mildew, seeds, or sprouts, or wet with water, or covered with dust either in the hand or the pot of another for, they should not, even if they can get it, except of such food, thinking that it is impure and unacceptable. 5. 1. But if perchance they accept of such food, under pressing circumstances 6, they should go to a secluded spot, a garden, or a monk's hall where there are no. Page 89. Eggs, nor living beings, nor sprouts, nor dew, nor water, nor ants, nor mildew, nor drops, of water, nor mud, nor cobwebs and rejecting, that which is affected by, and cleaning that which is mixed up, with living beings, and see, they should circumspectly eat or drink it. But with what they cannot eat or drink, they should resort to a secluded spot, and leave it there on a heap of ashes or bones, or rusty things, or chaff, or cow dung, or on any such like place, which they have repeatedly examined and cleaned. 2. A monk or a nun on a begging tour should not accept as alms whatever herbs they recognize, on examining them, as still whole, containing their source of life, not split longwise or broadwise, and still alive, fresh beans, living and not broken, for such food is impure and unacceptable. 3. But when they recognize after examination that those herbs are no more whole, do not contain their source of life, are split longwise or broadwise, and no more alive, fresh beans, lifeless and broken, then they may accept them, if they get them, for they are pure and acceptable. 4. A monk or nun on a begging tour should not accept as alms whatever flattened grains, grains containing much chaff, or half-roasted spikes of wheat, and c, or flour of wheat, and c, or rice or flour of rice, they recognize as only once worked one, for such food is impure and unacceptable. 5. But when they recognize these things as more than once worked, as twice, thrice worked, then they may accept them, if they get them, for they are pure and acceptable. 6. Page 90. A monk or a nun desiring to enter the abode of a householder for collecting alms, should not enter or leave it together with a heretic or a householder, or a monk who avoids all forbidden food, and c, together with one who does not. 7. A monk or a nun entering or leaving the out-of-door places for religious practices or for study one should not do so together with a heretic or a householder, or a monk who avoids all forbidden food, together with one who does not. 8. A monk or a nun wandering from village to village should not do so together with a heretic or a householder, or a monk who avoids all forbidden food, together with one who does not. 9. A monk or a nun on a begging tour should not give, immediately or mediately, food, and see, to a heretic or a householder, or a monk who avoids all forbidden food, to one who does not. 1. O. Oh. A monk or a nun on a begging tour should not accept food, and see, from a householder whom they know to give out of respect for an ergrantha, in behalf of a fellow ascetic, food, and see, which he has bought or stolen or taken, though it was not to be taken nor given, but was taken by force, by acting sinfully towards all sorts of living beings, for such like food, and see, prepared by another man too or by the giver himself, brought out of the house or not brought out of the house, belonging to the giver or not belonging to him, partaken or tasted of, or not partaken or tasted of, is impure and unacceptable. Page 91. In this precept substitute for, on behalf of one fellow ascetic, two, on behalf of many fellow ascetics, three, on behalf of one female fellow ascetic, four, on behalf of many female fellow ascetics, so that there will be four analogous precepts. 11. A monk or a nun should not accept of food, and see, which they know has been prepared by the householder for the sake of many sermanas and brahmanas, guests, paupers, and beggars, after he has counted them, acting sinfully towards all sorts of living beings, for such food, whether it be tasted of or not, is impure and unacceptable. 12. A monk or a nun should not accept of food, and see, Procured in the way described in section 1i for the sake of the persons mentioned in section 12, if the said food, 
and C, has been prepared by the giver himself, has been brought out of the house, does not belong to the giver, has not been partaken or tasted of, for such food, and C, is impure and unacceptable, but if the food, and C, has been prepared by another person, has been brought out of the house, belongs to the giver, has been partaken or tasted of, one, may accept it, for it is pure and acceptable. 13. A monk or a nun wishing to enter the abode of a householder with the intention of collecting alms, should not, for the sake of food or drink, enter or leave such always liberal, always open houses, where they always give a morsel, always the best morsel, always a part of the meal, always nearly the half of it. This certainly is the whole duty of a monk or a nun in which one should, instructed in all its meanings and endowed with bliss, always exert oneself. Thus I say. 14. Footnotes. 88 colon 1 Kuda. 88 colon 2 Pindishana. 88 colon 3 This is the typical beginning of most precepts or sutras in this Kuda. Esi bhikkhu va bhikkhuni va gahavikalam pimdave apedi anupavith samani esi gam puna ganega. In the sequel, I have shortened this rather lengthy preamble. 88 colon 4 by the other is meant the householder or the giver, detri. 88 colon 5 This is the typical conclusion of all prohibitions. Afasuya manasanagam ti manamain laib samp no padigahega. In the translation, the plural is used throughout in order to avoid the necessity of always repeating he or she. 88 colon 6 as e.g. total want of another opportunity to get suitable food during famine and sickness. 89 to 1 pounded or cooked or roasted, and c. because after only one operation sperms of life might still be left. 90 colon 1 these are the Bhikarabhumi and Viharabhumi. 90 colon 2 Purasamtarakada. I have rendered this word according to the interpretation of the commentators, but in a similar passage, 8, 3, sections 2 and 3, they understand the word to mean appropriated by another person. Next, Book 2, Lecture 1, Lesson 2.